This is the innovator of Bonds, Tommy Dream, and yours at the Strike Zone in Rhode Island, taking you to the extreme. Folks, the voice of your Super Bowl champion, New England Patriots, about to be on the line. Jay is plugging him up, plugging him up now. The one and only Bob Sosi joining us. Bob, thank you so much for joining us in the Strike Zone today. You're talking to Joe, JT, and Jay. How are you today? Hey, I'm doing great, guys. Good to be with you. Thanks for having me. It's Thank, our pleasure. Thanks for uh, calling in, Bob. It's it's definitely uh, been uh, something we've been working on here. Um, you know, you and me have been in touch for the last uh, month or so, and uh, we're 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 really happy to finally have you on the air. And uh, f- first of all, I just want to say what what was that experience like calling the Super Bowl, which was uh, just it was almost uh, two months ago now. Mm. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, and it's uh, it's really still a remarkable experience to think that, uh, you know, it, it actually happened, Jason, honestly, because uh, <laughs> I still don't quite believe it two months later. But uh, it was, first, just to be a part of the Super Bowl week in Arizona and to experience the magnitude of it and the coverage that the game generates, it's such an event. And every day, you know, the buildup between the AFC Championship and the uh, Super Bowl itself uh, re- really uh, you know, was an experience unto itself, uh, especially in the aftermath of the AFC Championship. For several days, the conversation was dominated by underinflated footballs and, mm-hmm. and what might have happened at Gillette Stadium, what didn't happen, uh, what we still don't know happened. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it was almost a surreal experience heading out to Arizona after the the rally in downtown Boston, a send off of the team captains, Bill Belichick and Robert and Jonathan Kraft, and, and then to get out to Arizona and uh, and to see the the amount of media coverage surrounding the game. So, you know, everything before the game itself was was a you know a once in a lifetime, or at least a first in a lifetime opportunity for me just to be around an event. It was uh, on such a large scale, uh, and and uh, to understand that you know the whole world would be watching what transpired the following Sunday, and then the game itself turned out to be one of the great games in NFL history. And naturally, there were so many swings of emotion during the course of the game, and and we were on quite a ride uh, from start to finish. My broadcast partner Scott Zolak and I, and in particular the last couple of plays of the game after Jermaine Curtis makes this incredible circus catch putting Seattle at the five, Marshawn Lynch runs it to the one, and then Malcolm Butler, of course, makes one of uh, the historically great plays in, in, in NFL history when he steps in front of uh, Ricardo Lockett and intercepts that pass to preserve the Patriots' win. I mean, as a broadcaster, Bob, how do you prepare for moments like that, moments that just the action tells the story, but just an incredible edge of your sheet, emotional moments, and obviously you're the Holden Tower guy, you're invested in the New England side. How do you prepare for moments like that? Well, I think you touched on it, really. You just try to concentrate on, on the action telling the story. And in, in that particular case, as I mentioned, the emotional swing that we were on was, was so dramatic because – the pass had scored with about two minutes to go, so you're way up here. And then, of course, Curse makes that catch. It looks like the Seahawks are on the verge of taking the lead, and there's going to be less than a half minute to go for the Patriots at that uh, to try to come back and, and respond. And you're almost, uh, you know, you, you really fight the urge to take anything for granted at that point. And, and you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure still how it all came off, but I'm, I am thankful at least that, you know, I just – did my best to follow the ball. And it was such a quick throw with a shotgun snap to Russell Wilson and then immediately trying to make that the completion on the slant. And, and the ball disappeared for a split second before I, I was certain that Butler had it. And you just, you just try to describe what you see, but certainly the emotion comes out. And, you know, honestly, at that moment, I really didn't know how it sounded or how I called it. And I said to our producers, we were heading down to the locker room after we signed off. In the booth, uh, the play-by-play crew. I said, "How did it sound? Did I do okay? You know, did I get it right? Did I did I say it was Butler?" And, he's, and, he, and he confirmed that, yeah, you know, you you, you, you did the best that you could. And uh, you know, and, and when I think back to it now, I mean, I, 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 I again, I think it's just the nuts and bolts that it, you know people first taught me when I originally had the opportunity to get on the air and broadcast minor league baseball years ago or high school. Uh, basketball or, or small college football, 
you know, just stick to the nuts and bolts, follow the ball, describe what you see. And, and that's exactly what you try to do even in a moment like that. And, Bob, I was uh, curious, what was the process like for you that you went through um, when you um, were applying to be the uh, next Patriots uh, play-by-play announcer? Um, You know, obviously you did get selected back in uh, April of 2013 to uh, replace um, Gil Santos there. Um, who retired after 36 years um, broadcasting. But can you give the uh, listeners and uh, the viewers a little bit of a description of what the process was like for you and and how it all started out and kind of, you know, obviously we know the ending with you getting hired, but just... Well, yeah, the process really began years and years ago. And, uh, you know, it's really all the cliches that I heard as a young broadcaster an aspiring broadcaster that came to fruition. It goes back, honestly, to my minor league broadcasting days and uh, calling games in Frederick, Maryland, and also doing the Naval Academy football games back in the early 2000s and had an encounter with well, one of my favorite broadcasters. It was a chance meeting, and I asked, I told him a little bit about who I was and what I did, and I asked him if uh, he wouldn't mind listening to one of my tapes. And he said, absolutely, send me a cassette. And that's how long ago it was. Wow. Wow. <laughs> we were still in the business of sending out cassettes. And he listened to it, liked what he heard, and he passed it along to his boss. Well, fast forward nearly a full decade, uh, his boss, who listened to that tape and liked it as well, played a bit of a role in helping 98.5, the sports hub launch in Boston, suggested the program director here that he meet with me. In the interim, I had continued to do broadcasting work in the Mid-Atlantic and, and continued to call the Navy football games. But I, I met my future wife, and she was from the Boston area, and we had moved back here uh, in 2008. And at that point in time, I'd reached out to Gil Santos to listen to a football CD, and, and Gil liked what he heard, so that gave me a lot of confidence that, you know, as, as much as I – had done baseball through the years, again, going back to the minor league days, I, I thought at that moment, well, maybe I could call football at the NFL level based on what, what Gil had said. And then a year later, the Sports Hub launched. CBS created the uh, FM All Sports Station, of course, the Sports Hub. And uh, this individual who heard one of my tapes uh, years earlier suggested to the program director at 985, Mike Thomas, that he at least uh, open his door and sit down and meet with me. And Mike was kind enough to do that, along with his assistant program director, Rick Radzik. And, you know, we sat down uh, for about a half hour or so in the fall of 2009. I introduced myself, and uh, they didn't have any opportunities for me at that point in time. I was just looking for some part-time work to do sports updates. And uh, I left a CD, though, and it had some football play-by-play on it of a Navy Ohio State game. And again, fast forwarding several years later, Gill announces his retirement and toward the very end of the 2012 season, I get an email out of the blue from someone from 98.5 saying, we'd like to hear more of your work. And uh, I sent in another CD, of course, and uh, you know they liked what they heard. Uh, Mike Thomas, as well as Mark Cannon, who oversees uh, CBS Radio in Boston, and uh, anybody else, I guess, who was involved in the process from the station standpoint. And uh, we we had a chance to sit down and talk. They brought me in for an interview. And, in fact, it was this, uh, within a week of an interview with the Pawtucket Red Sox. And, uh, you know, it went well enough that uh, I was still on their radar and, and positioned myself pretty well for the Patriots job. And, then I got offered the uh, Paw Sox job before the Pats had made their decision, and 95 had made its decision. And uh, I took the Paw Sox job with the understanding that if, if I get the Patriots play-by-play role, I may have to give up baseball. And that's exactly what happened. But, you know, the great lesson is that, uh, you know, you really have to network in the business and, 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 and continue to try to get better, which I, which I was doing. The whole point of that original conversation in, in 2001 I asked Gary Cohn, speaking of the former Paw Sox radio announcer, who was then the voice of the New York Mets and was doing some college basketball in Westwood One, I asked him to listen to a tape. It was in the interest of getting better. Gary, can you listen to a tape and provide some advice? He liked what he heard, passed it on to his boss. And years later, of course, he's involved, at least as a consultant, helping 98.5 launch. He gives, he gives Mike Thomas a call. And, you know, one thing leads to another. And, uh, you know, Gil was kind enough to critique the football CD and, and again, that gave me the confidence to, to pursue an opportunity with 98.5 as well. So 
Uh, you know, there's all these different things that are connected, and, and they all underscore, I think, the lessons that, uh, that that you're you're taught at a young age in this business to uh, make sure you network. Uh, it's about being in the right place at the right time. Always look to get better, and eventually, all you need to do is is, is uh, capture the interest of, of one person. It, it, it may just take one person who who likes what you what you sound like on the radio, and uh, you know. It, it, for my, my case, it took a long time, but eventually the right person heard it, and, and I'm so fortunate to be in this position. Bob, you spoke of Gil Santos. Obviously, Gil Santos and Gino Capaletti, such an iconic duo um, as for the voices of the New England Patriots. <clears throat> And yourself and, of course, Scott Zolak had, in some some people would say, maybe the tough job. And, and following that act, I think you and Zoe do a great job. You guys are different. You don't try to duplicate the act that Gil and Gino did for so long and certainly was so iconic as the voices of the New England Patriots. And I, How was it like following up such legends, and how would you describe your chemistry with Scott Zolak? Well, the chemistry is great with Zoe, and it's a big part of, I think, our success in the eyes of many, uh, you know, the first couple of years. And, and you made a great point, too, that, that we sound different. It's a different broadcast. But I think going in, both of us realized that we could only be ourselves. I mean, Zoe had a year of working with Gil before I came on board. But uh, I think when we started, it really was an entirely different sound. And, 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 and that helps because I think, Gil and Gino, as you mentioned, they were the perfect marriage on radio for so long. And Gil still, in my mind, is is the the voice of autumn in New England, and always will be. And uh, I think had had our broadcast been, and I worked with a partner who was similar to Gino or even Gino himself, then you know the comparisons would would inevitably be made. I think a, a little more uh, uh, a little more unkind uh, toward yours truly. Uh, because you, you know the, the broadcast might sound like a poor imitation of our predecessors, but I've been so fortunate that along with Zoe, we've been able to kind of create our own sound, and rather than try to replace Gil and Gino, and I've always been uh, very adamant about this fact since being hired for the position that you know I'm not looking to replace Gil Santos, and uh, we're not replacing Gil and Gino, Scott and and and, and myself, but uh, we're just trying to create our own footprints in the broadcast booth. And I think we've done that with our own style, our own sound. And, you know, Zoe's personality and his energy has been, have been so instrumental in helping me overcome the nervousness that I experienced because I was extremely nervous following someone like Gil. Uh, he's, he's such a fun guy to be around all the time. He really put me at ease from day one. And I think because of that, too, we, we found a chemistry. You know, I'm kind of the straight guy. I try to stick to the play-by-play and describe what I see, but uh, at times try to play off his humor. Uh, on, on the other hand, he, he's he's a guy that not only has all that energy and that passion for the Patriots and, of course, uh, his own way of uh, really capturing moments uh, like uh, the Ken Brill Tompkins catch to beat the Saints that inspired show oh. ponies and unicorns and, mm-hmm. you know, what he said uh, in the wake of the Butler interception at the Super Bowl, uh, you know, he's a guy that sees the game as a quarterback and he played for so long in the NFL and he's got such a great mind for football and knowledge of the Patriots organization. And, uh, he's a great guy to learn from too. And, uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun working with him and uh, hopefully we get to do it for many, many years to come. And Bob, uh, you've done play by play, um, announcing for years now, um, on your website, actually, um, Bob Soshi, um, on on bobsoshi uh, dot com, you have a picture of yourself uh, calling actually a Army Navy uh, men's basketball game with Reggie Miller. Uh, how was that experience uh, working with a uh, Hall of Fame uh, basketball player? Who uh, I I imagine you probably watched plenty of his games. Um, you know, in in the years when he was playing for the Indiana Pacers. Oh, absolutely. It was a blast. I, I had a chance to call a couple of games with Reggie Miller, and uh, in that particular instance that you're referencing uh, on, on a website that I had created uh, a number of years ago, really as a resume website, and I haven't really kept current uh, since I have my dream job, and you know, hope, hopefully I won't need to uh, you know, put any resume material on there in the near future. But uh, yeah, that particular clip that, that's on that website was from an Army-Navy broadcast with 
Reggie and Chris Spatola, who played at Army, and uh, is the son-in-law of Mike Krzyzewski, and, and, is, and, and I think is a very good analyst calling games. And, and the thing that impressed both Chris and I so much is that Reggie came in as this Hall of Fame player. And, you know, someone that I, you know, watched from afar following basketball and thought, wow, this is a guy, this guy's a trash talker, a great player, but, oh, my God, what an ego he must have. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I heard that he was going to be working with us. Honestly, I, I had a lot of trepidation thinking, you know, who's this, you know, what's it going to be like? He's going to come in as a prima donna. And, uh, you know, Chris and I are going to have to really take a back seat. And I'll tell you, it could not have been more different. He is as genuinely a nice guy as anybody I've been around in broadcasting, especially with Army Navy. His father was a, an Air Force career man, and, and Reggie has such a reverence for the military and uh, the service academies in particular. And he, had, by request, his own request, he asked CBS to put him on those games for the CBS Sports Network. And he came in, and, and he was so gracious to, to all the midshipmen and West Point cadets who wanted his autograph, who wanted pictures with him. And I'm not just talking about players, but I mean, he would stand on the court after games. He did a couple of games with us. And he, he would pose for pictures and sign autographs for well over an hour after after signing off the air and then as far as his broadcast work goes he put in a lot of time and homework he was somebody that uh, you know did not want to be the star of the broadcast but just wanted to fit in with the team and respected the chemistry that chris and i had and the fact that you know reggie was coming in for one game out of a package of contests whereas chris and i had been doing the whole season together for a conference the patriot league and you know, it really was a, a, a very fun experience because he was such a good guy. I mean, much like Scott Zolak, a lot of energy, very positive, uh, someone that, uh, you know, took what he did seriously and, and seriously enough to put in a lot of time and have, you know, make sure that he was well prepared for the game. He certainly did not want to embarrass himself. And he showed a lot of respect for the players on that court, too, because he wasn't calling too powers uh, that would wind up in the final four. He was calling Army and Navy, two teams that weren't very good, honestly, on the national scale of things in college basketball, but he understood what, what that particular game meant to those players. It was just as important to them as any game he ever played in, and, and you know, it was really a, a, pro, a pleasure to be around a pro like that. Absolutely not. Now, Bob, in your first two years of calling New England Patriot football, <clears throat> you've called one team that made it to the AFC Championship game, one team that ended up winning the Super Bowl. Could you have asked for a better start in this line of work? No, I'm extremely fortunate. You know, guys, that's one of the things that it hits home with me every time I look around uh, at a lot of my peers in the business uh, who have called games for years and years and, and never gotten a chance to get to the playoffs, much less the Super Bowl. Uh, John Murphy, for example, has been the longtime play-by-play man for the Buffalo Bills. And the Bills, of course, have gone a decade and a half without reaching the playoffs. And, uh, you know, I look at somebody like John, who really does a fabulous job and is a great guy, and I think how fortunate I am. Not that his circumstances aren't great, too. I mean, he's, he's the voice of a team that he loves, and he's in a place that he loves and, and knows well. And, and uh, he, you know, he's he's done a great job and, and, and a great opportunity, but I fully, uh, you know, realized that I, my ride in the NFL thus far has been a, really a dream ride. And, uh, I've had a chance, as you mentioned, to call an AFC championship one step away from the Super Bowl, And then the following year, get over that hump. So many guys might get to a championship game. And then the next year, their team that they're calling games for takes a big step back. With the Patriots, of course, every year it seems they're in the hunt to go to the Super Bowl. Now, four straight conference championships and uh, the, the four Super Bowl titles plus the other two Super Bowl appearances in a span of 14 years, it's incredible. And I'm extremely fortunate to be in the position I'm in. And it's something I hope I never take for granted. I don't, I don't plan on it. I, I really do appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it's not only the fact that it's such a successful team, but such great fans, too, and the fact that it's a team that not only calls a city its home, in this case it calls a region its home, and it has fans not only in the in, in the New England area, but uh, as well all over the world. And, and that's a tremendous responsibility, but along with that, a huge privilege, too. <clears throat> and, uh, Bob, throughout the years, um, 
who would you say was um, w- your favorite person that you have worked with uh, doing uh, play-by-play announcing? Yeah, as far as the broadcast partner goes? Yes. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, Joe is right up there. Um, I've, I've had a chance to work with a couple of guys that I've, I've really enjoyed personally. My broadcast partner for Navy for many years, Omar Nelson, a Naval Academy graduate and a former football player there. Uh, similar kind of personality, uh, not a broadcaster by trade, uh, someone who actually you know did it as a part-time endeavor and but knew football extremely well and knows football extremely well and, and, and really got better over the course of our time together. And, and, and I think that does a great job still on the Navy radio broadcast. But from a personal standpoint, we just had a great time every, every weekend, whether it was home or away, uh, being in the booth and, uh, you know, just sharing dinner the night before and, and having a lot of laughs and talking about the game the week before, the game upcoming, uh, then actually calling the game. And uh, it's, it's been a very similar experience with Zoe. So I've been very lucky in my, my football broadcasting career. And then, of course, in baseball in Pawtucket, I had a very good opportunity to work for a short time with Jeff Levering, and now mm-hmm. works with the Milwaukee Brewers, and a uh, very, very talented guy there as well. So I've been extremely fortunate. Are you still in touch with uh, Jeff? And, and did you get to congratulate him on the new job that he has there? You know, I, I did. Uh, we don't we don't stay in touch uh, a, a great deal. You, you know, text here or there, or an mm-hmm. email uh, or Facebook post. But extremely happy for he and his wife. They have a young young child, a uh, uh, baby boy, and uh, things are falling in place for him very well. He came to Tucket and got that pipeline going to the big leagues. So mm. uh, he, he's really a talented guy and uh, uh, has you know again a lot of energy and enthusiasm. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody out there who loves baseball more than Jeff Levering. So he's he's in a great position, and it's a well-deserved position. It's pretty awesome to see how many uh, broadcasters have come out of the Pawtucket Red Sox organization and moved on to uh, b- bigger and, and you know, uh, up to the next level, you'd have to say, um, throughout the years. It's, it's definitely a, a great, I would say, a great uh, point for, for people to make that next jump up to the next level. Well, it is, and they've got a great one now. I mean, Will Fleming will be there before long, just like his brother Dave, mm-hmm. who was a Pro Sox broadcaster and now has been uh, with the San Francisco Giants for many years. Oh, yeah. But mm-hmm. uh, you go back to Gary Koenig, I mentioned earlier, and mm-hmm. Donnie Orsillo, of course, and uh, Dan Hoard, who's the voice of the Cincinnati Bengals, one of my good friends in the business. Yep. Uh, Dave Jagler, the Washington Nationals. I know I'm probably leaving some other people out, but uh, it's really remarkable. Uh, lineage of broadcasters that they they've uh, been able to uh, cultivate in Pawtucket, and a lot of that has to do with the people who run that organization so well for so long because they take such great pride in how their radio broadcasts out, and they pick they pick qualified people and, and guys that they believe have a chance to get to the big leagues. It took me several time uh, turns trying to knock on their door before they eventually hired me. So, uh, you know, I was very very fortunate when I got the opportunity with the boss acts in the spring of 2013, but it took a long time to, to finally earn that opportunity. I had been considered a couple of different stages um, by the Paw Sox uh, over the course of the previous decade or so before they finally gave me that opportunity. Now your current status with the New England Patriots, notwithstanding is one of your future goals, Bob, to call major league baseball on the um, professional level. No, quite honestly, man, I, 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 I love the NFL. I, I love working for the Patriots. Um, I hope I can continue to do this for many, many years to come. I've got a young family, at least with uh, two kids that uh, are three and, and uh, soon to be five. And being in the NFL is just a, a tremendous privilege and, and opportunity, not only as a professional, but personally because of the schedule and, 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 and the travel demands not quite being what they are mm. in baseball or basketball or hockey, uh, for that matter. But even beyond that, I mean, I just I, I love the role that I have now with the Pats and, and 98.5 The Sports Hub. It's a great place to be, and uh, you know, it's what I'd, I'd love to continue to do. So 
hopefully I'll have that chance at least for a few more years, and uh, then we'll see after that. And, Bob, you've done a great job. And can I say as a side point, I've heard your work on Felger and Maz doing the hot takes segment. <laughs> I think you do a great job on that as well. I, I think that segment has really helped the viewers really get to know your personality, beside, you know, which I think helps – so much there's so much investment bob in the patriots play by play position as you characterized um your predecessor as the voice of autumn you know this is essentially the role you're in now and i think stuff like that really helps and it's really helped me to get to know you more not just as a broadcaster but what you stand for and what you're passionate about and I, I really enjoy those segments and i hope to see more of that well, I really appreciate that. That's very nice of you to say. I'll be honest with you. My first year, that was probably the toughest thing I had to do. You, you noted how difficult it was to follow Gil and Gino. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> and, and it was. But uh, sitting in that chair with Felger and Maz every Friday was, was pretty rough at times. But uh, those guys are, are, are tremendous at what they do. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I may not always agree, uh, especially when it comes to the Patriots, but I have a lot of respect for how they do what they do because – uh, they, they've really uh, turned that show into must-listen radio every day they, from 2 to 6. They don't back down from controversy, and I know sometimes I feel like they try to bait you on it, and you're always so professional, and you look at even nowadays, <laughs> they have this rivalry with Shane Victorino, which dominated the headlines today. So, Oh, no question, no question. You know, <laughs> and, and, and the great thing about those two guys is they understand you know, the, the difference in what we do, and uh, you know, Mike and Tony will, will try to push me, as you said. To, you know, they'll, they'll they'll push you to a point, but uh, they understand that there's a line there, and there is a difference between a play-by-play guy and, and, and a sports a radio host. I mean, yes. what they do is about opinion and cultivating interest, and in, in, in it's not only information, but it's entertainment. And uh, you know, uh, they're they're as I said before, they're exceptional at what they do, and I've I'm, I've really grown to enjoy it. Uh, I, I, I really, I, I'm a fan of their show, and I'm a fan of both of those guys. And, and you know, as, as the years have gone on, at least the, the first two seasons, uh, it, it's become a much more comfortable experience for me. Oh, well, I, I certainly, from a personal level, hope hope to see more of that, and I enjoy your work. And on behalf of Jay, JT, everybody listening on the Strike Zone, we really thank you for joining us today. It's really our honor to have you, especially coming off the heels of calling a Super Bowl champion. I've actually been employed with the Patriots myself for 13 years as a beer vendor, and I'm very proud to be part of the Wingwood Patriot family, and it's certainly an honor to have you with us, and you'll forever be part of the memory, sir. Well, I really appreciate that. That's very nice of you to say. Uh, and to be with you guys tonight, it's uh, been a lot of fun. I hope that uh, we can do it again sometime. And I certainly hope that next year, uh, you know, we, we can't really indulge during the game, but I hope you'll stop by the booth uh, at, at Gillette and uh, at least come by and say hi to Zoe and me and uh, get to know you face-to-face. Absolutely, absolutely. Awesome, I've, got, I've gotten to know Zoe a little bit on a personal level, but I would love to do that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah. You bet. You bet. Well, good to be with you guys tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bob. It was an honor and a pleasure. Appreciate you taking Um, the time out of your busy schedule. I know uh, with having a family and with everything that you're busy with. (laughs) Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, splitting my attention between my my three-year-old has been very upset tonight for some reason. I don't know what happened or whether she's uh, getting sick or not. and uh, along with that, of course, the regional semifinals. So yeah, it's right. yes. just beat North Carolina. It like it was a pretty good game. So. North Carolina went down? <laughs> oh, I missed it. Oh, wow. Look, Bob we... Sosi with the update. Now that's a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, go, thank you so much, sir. <laughs> thank you, Bob, very All much. Right, take care. Bob Sosi, folks, guys. you know him from 98.5, the Sports Hub, the voice of your Super Bowl champion, New England Patriots. Props to Jay on the execution for booking this guest, and certainly great to have Bob Sosi on, and we look forward to doing it again, certainly.